let's see. Actually, it won't be there until I refresh and see. Pumpkin spice latte is the first in the chat. It's not live yet. <laughs> is it? I hope that I have good internet connection. I should have it. Okay, yeah. We are live. Hello. Welcome to Celtic Cup of Coffee episode 77. We've had 77 Sundays in a row. And this is my friend Aquanta. Hi. Who's the first person from the FLDS to come on my channel. So say hi to Aquanta. We've had AUB. We've had uh, Calvin from the the work, which I kind of want to ask you some questions. Centennial. Like the, the, he called it the work, but I, um, I I heard of it as the centennial when I went to the creek. Oh, okay. He lives over the hill then? Yeah. Okay. Or he lived, yeah. But it's like the same area. But now we have someone from the FLDS. So we're going to hear some of her stories. And um, we're also going to be trying some of these. Since, since last time that we did a live in this uh, background was with Allison, and we drank these energy drinks. So um, in the tradition of that, we're going to be doing that. <laughs> But before we get into that, I did want to say uh, who number 77 is. So we don't have a lot of information on number 77 because I didn't know the family very well. But a lot of you guys know who Doris Hansen is. Have you ever watched Doris Hansen? I have. So you're on YouTube. You know yeah. No, okay. I no, I know of her. Her full sister is married to number 77. So, okay, so you okay. kind of know. But I always thought number 77 and his wife were like not really members of the order because. They didn't ever look polygamy. They had a nice house. It was like, they, they didn't have like, they just didn't look like your average order members. So I always thought that they were not members, but apparently they were very devout members. Um, he was converted to the order. He apparently was LDS at one point, served an LDS mission, I believe in the seventies. Mm -hmm. And then I think his wife, well at the time, like he had like moved to Kaysville or like was around Kaysville and the woman that he ended up marrying, she was like head over heels for him. And so he ended up joining the order for her and they're still members. But yeah, she is Doris Hansen's full sister. So that's who number 77 is. Not a whole lot of history on him right now, but they never looked polygamy, which I always felt like the families that never looked polygamy weren't like devout. Did you guys feel that way? I mean, my biological parents didn't look polygamy, but Really? They always seem to be pretty stout and faithful in the church. Yeah. Did you guys have that rule though? Because in ours, well at least when I was growing up, I remember hearing um, to get to the celestial kingdom you have to have three wives. Yeah. They believe that? Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Joe Smith? Possibly. I'm not sure. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you for the donation, Flinker Mary. Hi. Let's say hi to everyone really quick. Hi Mary. Hi Sarah. Hi the Calico Cat. Hi Diana. Hi Anthony. Hi Mandy. Amber's here. Okay. I'm kind of curious to see if anyone from the FLDS is going to be commenting today. Sometimes Marianne comments. But um, I have a few questions to ask you. But before, do you want to, do you want to taste one of these? We got a few yeah. drinks. But I don't know. What do you want to try? What flavor is that purple one? This is just called Cosmic Stardust. <laughs> oh, we can start with that one. I've never tried this one, though. This one's, I think, new. This is the peach energy. I don't know. We'll start with one and then go to the other. I got these little glasses so we can see what color they are. <laughs> and then we also got this boba drink. I'll have to show you guys in a second. <laughs> were you guys allowed to drink soda? Yeah. Ooh. You were? You could have Coca-Cola and Pepsi? Well, growing up as a kid, my parents didn't like to give it to us like all the time because, oh. you know, it's just so sugary. But sometimes we got root beer, have root beer floats. But they also mom, made homemade root beer. Yeah. We did that too. But you guys did it with dry ice. Our family did. Yeah. The first time in my family did it with um, yeast fermented, and I'm pretty sure it was alcoholic. <laughs> Accidentally <laughs> alcoholic. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I like this one. This one's my favorite. I want to compare it to the peach. It though. almost tastes like grape bubblegum. Grape bubblegum? Mm -hmm. It kind of tastes like those Italian sodas. No? That we have? A little bit, yeah. Hmm. I like that one. Okay. I'm excited to try this one. This is the new one. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, this is the peach one. Ooh. I really probably shouldn't pour this over my no. laptop. <laughs> it's clear. 
Hmm. I thought it was going to be orange. It smells very peachy. I like that one as much. <laughs> that purple one is really sweet. I know. I think that's why I like it so much. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, we were talking earlier about how the like record breaking number of who has the most kids in your group. Which, do you remember what number it is? I mean, the most I know of is 21. 21 to one mother? To one mom, yeah. Wow. And we've talked about it on my channel. Um, number 69's wife has 20 kids. So I think, I think one of them may have been adopted because of the other wife he was married to. I don't know if they did this in your group, but any woman who can bear children needs to bear children. So he was married to a mentally disabled woman and then they got her pregnant. She obviously couldn't take care of the kid. Um, so then this wife that had 20 kids took care of that kid. And I, I think they're counting that kid as the 20th. Maybe, maybe not. Mm. So maybe she technically has 21 with that one. But so that is crazy though. They had kids. twins though. Yours? I don't think so. No twins in that? So that would mean, I was trying to do the math. You'd have to like, you could start at 15 and then have a baby every single year. By the time you're 30, you'll have 15 kids. <laughs> then you'd have to have five more to get 20. So you'd have to be in your late 30s by the time you're done having kids. That's so many. You consistently have three or four kids in diapers for like yep. 20 years. Oh my gosh. That takes a toll on your body too. I heard it takes years off your life. I don't know because I don't have any. <laughs> Just babysitting takes years off mine. <laughs> I know. It's birth control. <laughs> It's true. We were talking about, too, we, we both wanted kids really bad when, when we were kids, right? Oh, yeah. Well, we were conditioned that way. Yep. You know? That's, that is a woman's purpose, is yeah. to have children. But we both, we were out and don't have kids. How long have you been out? At least seven years next month. Oh, wow. Or maybe six. I can't remember. July is your anniversary? I left in... Oh, it'll be six. I left on the 4th of July, Independence Day. Wow. In 2017. I left July 25th, 2012, no, 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 2013, because then I got married in 2014, <laughs> like right after I left, I got married. Speedy. I don't know. <laughs> and then seven years later, I got divorced. <laughs> I yeah. really want to see, because this says it has bobas in it, and I want to see how, how does that work? Wouldn't it get soggy? Do you want to open that over something besides your laptop? No, <laughs> just kidding. Maybe, I'll, maybe we should pour it. But I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna risk it all. But we're probably gonna have to pour for a while to get to the bobos, huh? Oh, you didn't shake it up. Oh, should I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I just bought this. I've never had one before. Denise, thank you for the gifted memberships. You're so sweet. Amanda, how's the foot? You guys wanna see it? <laughs> it's, it's bad. Aquanta almost had to carry me. <laughs> it's not as gnarly as it looked four days ago, though. Oh yeah, it was like puffy and... Oh, Eskel's here. Hi, Eskel. Love the bubble tea. Oh, TPZ's had it. Okay. I think I got about two pearls in here. I know, I feel like they're all... Swish it around really? a little bit and then someone will come to the surface. Mm, I don't think I swished it enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. No, like... Here. Oh, it smells good. It smells like one of those... People's drinks they make at Starbucks sometimes that have like graham crackers in them. Mm -hmm. That smells like. I like the caramel, caramel ribbon crunch. Wow, we've got a lot of people here today. We're already at 114. It looks so good. Wow. I would say, um, I don't know if I would buy this again. <laughs> would you? Mm. It just tastes like uh, maple syrup, sugar, and milk. <laughs> you know how your milk tastes after you've eaten all of like the cinnamon toast crunch out of it. Yeah. That's what this tastes like. Mm -hmm. So you could, if you would like to just buy a can of that, you can. <laughs> and it comes with tapioca balls. But they don't come out until the very end, it looks like. <laughs> Hi Diana. Hi Melissa. The tapioca pearls settle at the bottom. Yep. <laughs> That's cool. Someone, someone has had this drink before. Nice. Um, something I did want to talk about was because we actually just did a we did a cook-off video so that's gonna be coming out soon 
Um, but what we were talking, what we forgot to talk about in the video, because we were talking about it before, was how you moved people around in the night in the oh, group. Oh yeah, within the church. Yeah. I had never heard about this, and it's 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 basically like when people are going into hiding. I wasn't even that. I think a lot of it was based off of just people kind of outgrowing their homes. Different families had different needs for the sizes. And honestly, some of it I think was just BS. Really? I, I think they did some of it just because just they could. Just to mess with people? Just so that people couldn't ever figure out where people were. Why? Outside people specifically. Oh, okay. Honestly, I don't think there was any reason that 75% of those moves should have happened. Really? And so so she was moving people in the night. You you were even saying like, oh, I can't even count how many times, right? Because there was oh, yeah. so many times. It was like a moving crew. And there was like this group of families that were called. For their older kids to come and help and then you just move uh families in the middle of the night she what was the story you said the one that you remember the very most <laughs> oh yeah so there was a family that was under some type of scrutiny and i don't know if it was from a com from their company or something what what maybe they were higher up in the church but we were moving them and the person that was there being you know authoritative over the moving crew was telling us like how important it was that this was kept a secret nobody needs to know you just need to completely forget who these people are that they even moved where they moved and the <laughs> fact that they said that i never forgot a single detail about yeah. <laughs> you forgot every single other one no, oh, that's, i never forgot anything about that one You're so. like, wow this is important isn't it <laughs> do you remember the address do you remember who moved there <laughs> I better commit this one to memory. <laughs> it's so weird. That's why I'm wondering, like, what the hell was the point of all of that? Because I thought you were talking about, um, you know, when there's people that are, like, chosen to be moved to the to the more righteous places. Because I heard of, like, kids that were more righteous than their family getting moved, like, 13-year-olds getting moved to South Dakota on those, like, compounds out there. Oh, yeah. Some of the, different, some of the different areas. It's kind of like the, the area in Texas where the raid mm -hmm. happened in 2008. That's what that that whole area in Texas was meant for, was like the righteous ones? Yeah, it was people that were called to go to that stake of Zion. And so there were families where one mom would be gone, or maybe the dad and a couple kids would be gone, or the whole family except for a couple of kids would be gone. Would they tell them like, oh, the, God has told us that these three in the family are worthy, but the rest of you aren't, and we're not going to... Would they tell them why, or like you're reading books or watching TV or... I don't know. None of my family ever went. Mm -hmm. Well, not my biological family. One of my stepsisters went with her husband. To Texas? Yeah. Oh, and she wow. was there during the raid. But I remember one of my cousins was deemed worthy to go there. And she was young. She was like 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. And my aunt told me and my mom that she just disappeared during the night. So they didn't even tell the family? They, well, the dad knew. And her grandfather knew because her grandfather was kind of over the bishop in that area in Texas. Yeah. So the grandfather knew about it, but she just disappeared during the night. And when my aunt asked her, um, her husband, mm -hmm. how do you know what happened? Where did she go? And it was just told, you know, be at peace. She's doing the Lord's will. Oh my god. And gosh. then she got married. Not too, not too the long. The kid did? They yeah, got my moved? cousin. Okay. Not too long after she moved to Texas, way underage. Her and wow. I are the same age. And she has got a child that is, I don't know the exact age, but he's probably, he's got to be pushing 15 by now. Wow. So, so, so she got called and they put her out into Texas and then her own family, half of her own family didn't even know. They didn't know for a while. They just took her in the night? It was just can, like, can she's doing the Lord's it? will. Can, like, let's say I get called. Well, I would never, but <laughs> if I got called, can I say, uh, no thanks. <laughs> I will pass on my ticket to heaven. I don't, I don't know. I don't know that anybody did because it was such a privilege. To be Good. a part of the righteous, you know, who would want to refuse that? Wow. So you know? so everybody wanted People that. looked forward to it. I mean, we prayed so hard about being called to go to the Lord's stake of Zion. What, wherever what it was. did you think would happen when you got there? That that's basically like you, you've made it into heaven if you make it there? I guess so. Wow. I so I guess it's kind of similar to like our, our ticket, like not our ticket, our numbering men. I call it like a ticket to heaven. When you get your number, you receive your number. It's almost like you you earned your right in heaven, kind of thing. Yeah. Because they're like the more worthy. But yeah, they pray about that too. Like, what do I need to do to get this? Yeah. But only men get it. <laughs> yeah, basically. Thank you for the donation, Mary. I have a question. If there's a family with disabilities moving in the middle of the night, was there a lot of family with disabilities? I mean, not a lot, but people did have mm -hmm. kids with disabilities, and there was one in particular that I remember. She had a few children, and I don't remember what the 
the disease was that they had, but her kids were essentially vegetables. Mm -hmm. They lived in their cribs or in recliners or in their chairs or whatnot. They couldn't walk or talk or anything. But she got married, lived in this house, raised her kids in this house, had remodels done to it to help her take care of these kids. It had the high rise bathtubs built wow. in, had a ramp built up to the porch and sh they moved her. And in the I, night? Yeah, they, they moved her with her kids and I remember it being so hard on her. She was just trying to, you know, like be okay with it because the church wanted it to happen. Yeah. But she struggled so hard. I mean, within like a couple of months, they moved her back. Yeah, because that house was built for Yeah, more it was her, built. They did a lot of remodeling specifically around those three kids so they could be taken care of. Wow. So I never understood why they even moved her in the first place, but they yeah. ended up moving her back. Well, good. They should move her back. That's good, though. That's one of the great things about your group is that they they know how to build homes. And so you were. she was saying, too, that they even built, because the kitchens are huge. Cause you guys, in a lot of the big houses, yeah. yeah. And they grew up all in one home. Like, that's the difference between the order and your group. We had moms, like my mom was in her house, the first wife is in her house. They would have killed each other if not. Because they're <laughs> sisters. 100%. Yeah. My mom would have been pushing her down the stairs. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna oh, believe me. That. There were some of the worst jealousies that really? I had ever seen in my life. Everybody lived together. How many moms was it in one house? Um, when my mom married my stepdad, she was fifth wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So to clarify, her biological parents never lived with me, but then uh, you guys moved in with your stepdad when your your biological dad got sent away. Yeah. And then that was a probably a huge change to have to adjust to. It was. We how many wives was it? Five, you said? Mom was a fifth, yeah, when fifth she married wife. him. And then how many kids were in one house? I don't recall. It was in the 40s wow. after she married him. That is crazy. So everyone had to share a bathroom <laughs> and a room. <laughs> Everybody shared rooms, but in the bigger homes, I mean, they, they built big rooms so people could share them, but a lot of the bigger homes had adequate bathrooms. That's so cool. one of the homes we lived in had more bathrooms than bedrooms. Oh, wow. If I remember right, it had like 18 or 19 bedrooms and like 24 bathrooms. Oh my gosh. And that was built by, by, by members. By the church, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. That is insane to think about. None of the homes that I ever saw in the order were that big. <laughs> we grew up in small, like we were poor. We were taught like all of your incomes and outgoings in the name of the Lord. Like you live in poverty because this is for the kingdom of God. Did you ever hear this quote? Um, I'd rather be a janitor in the house of the Lord than a king in the other kingdom. They would say that all the time to get you to I don't just remember work that, your ass that off. It <laughs> makes sense. But yeah, our first home that my mom, so my mom's the second wife, and she was put into one of the apartments that the order owned. It was a two bedroom, and we didn't move out of that home until my mom had six kids. Wow. And then we moved in. So my mom had her own room, and then six kids, three girls, and three boys. And then we finally got to move into, it was like hand-me-downs. We got to move into the first, when the first wife was done with her home, because she had a bigger family, she would move to the next one, and we would take on her home. Oh, wow. And then the third wife, same thing, third wife would move into the, we kind of did it with cars a little bit. I don't know if you guys did that, but no. everybody just shared. Well, yeah, we shared cars type of thing, but I don't remember cars like rotating from family to family, because we all lived in one house, so we had like family cars. Yeah. So there was jealousy? Was there a favorite wife? I think there was. I think there always I is. I think there was. And I think one of the main struggles with the jealousy and the contention in my stepdad's home is, so he married his first two wives. Well, or his first three wives. Had mm -hmm. kids. And then he married his fourth wife, who was in the same situation as my mom. Her husband had been sent away, so she married into the family with all of her kids. Mm -hmm. And then my mom came along with all of her kids. Mm -hmm. So there was like three households and three moms that raised their families different ways, and now they're all trying to live together, and it, it did not jive. I'm sure it, they it was hard. Because one mom's going to treat the like your kids, or your mom's kids, a certain way, and your mom's like, uh, 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 uh. And yeah. I'm sure some of them believed in spanking and maybe others didn't. So like, well, don't touch my kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it wasn't only that too. It was like, and they were very judgmental of how they all did stuff. And there was an issue with the laundry. Oh, you don't sort your laundry. Well, I sort my kids' laundry. Why do you fold your pants like that? Oh, Why do you vacuum gosh. like this? How are you okay with dishes sitting? Like there was so, everybody was so much different because we all came from different places. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a, like, why don't you mind your business? Yeah. <laughs> It, it was a shit show, so I not say that much. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, thank you for the donation. Hey guys, what can you say about the Owen family? I know at least one of Tom Green's daughters married into that family. Um, 
Huh, Owen family. I mean, I don't, you can Google, oh, I don't know how much I can say about Owen family. That's like a specific, you're like directly targeting the Owen family. Uh, Suzanne Owen is a public figure because she went on the news. If you Google Vanguard Suzanne Owen, she publicly um, talked about how Vanguard, it, she, she, she's heard of the order, but Vanguard's not affiliated with it. Even though Vanguard is a, like 99% of the kids that are going to Vanguard are order members. So she is married to also Paul Kingston's brother. So for her to be saying, oh, we're not affiliated, da, da, da. Basically, my whole example of saying that is uh, the Owens are very like loyal to the order. At least the ones I knew, they're very dedicated, loyal members. And I was pretty decent friends with one of the Owen girls. Same thing, very, very uh, loyal and dedicated. <laughs> but I, that's interesting, how do you know the Owens? I actually didn't even know that the, any Owens married into Tom Green's family. But for those of you who don't know, I mean, a lot of you guys have watched the Tom Green documentary. Um, he's that polygamist that went to jail for impregnating, what was it, a 13-year-old? As one of his recall. many wives. Anyways, but he got out of jail, and then he ended up, towards the end of his life, joining the order. I believe he had to pay a fee to join the order. And then, um... Oh God, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I know. Is there a fee for... I mean, no one can join yours. What, I could... Could I potentially from the order join and marry into it? I mean, back when they were having marriages? You could have back in the day. I, well, I don't know. With all the changes now, they might accept people at this point because they've lost so many over the last decade. That's true. But, I, think... I mean, I don't remember for as long as I've been alive of people joining, but obviously there were people back in the earlier days, say like the 60s, 70s, and maybe even in the 80s, yeah. that, that joined from the LDS church after they left. Yeah, I feel like as soon as like polygamy was uh, taken out of the LDS church, then all these churches formed. But um, like as far as the order, no one really joins unless it's like marrying into or like Tom Green. Tom Green was like a weird situation where he would kind of bounce from polygamy group to polygamy group. And he'd be like, oh, this is the true one. Oh, wait, that's not the true one. And then he ultimately died of COVID in the order. And then all his wives married number 69, pretty much all of them. <laughs> That with the same guy that we were just talking about that married the disabled girl and had a kid with her. But, interesting, man. So, that's what's weird too, is like, we don't have missionaries. We don't, we don't want people to be joining. Also, the order is racist, so they're not going to knock on doors. Oh, you know what? You are two shades too dark, so we're just going to go. <laughs> they don't do the missionary work. They, they kind of believe in like the chosen will be chosen kind yeah. of thing. And I think that that's how your group is. I think that's too. similar, yeah. AUB is different, though. The, the group that Cody Brown's from, mm -hmm. um, they would have missionaries going to the UK, and they brought members who, who moves to Utah from the UK, I guess, to live polygamy, I don't know. But it was usually LDS. So they carried that over from the LDS then when they formed yeah. the group. It's interesting to see like what, what gets brought over and what gets left behind. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of weird, too, to hear like your group had people drink. And people, well, back in the day, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and even when we were told to stop, a lot of people still just drink. Just continued, yeah. They just stayed in the closet while they drink. <laughs> yeah, they just pretended that they weren't. And I know in the order, it was, it's, it's way hush-hush, but like way back in the day, it was like okay to drink a beer every now and then. But because of the word of wisdom, it's like a huge no-no now. You know what was so funny is, like, they always reference the word of wisdom, mm -hmm. but everybody drank coffee. Everybody's always Don't they still coffee. drink coffee to this yeah. day? Weird. But so coffee's okay, but alcohol's not? Well, I think if you ask the leaders, neither of them are okay, but people are not going to give up coffee after they've been drinking it for 50 years. It's yeah. just, they're just not going to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going <laughs> to. I don't know about you. Um... I did want to briefly say uh, that there's some like new stuff coming out about Sam Bateman and I just wanted to have that linked down below. Uh, it's the first link if you want to do some more research on Sam Bateman. I don't know how many people know about Sam Bateman, but if you don't know and that the name is unfamiliar, click the link in the description box down below because it's it's new information on it. Basically, in the FLDS, I feel like there's been a there's been a fight for power since Warren has gone to prison. I keep hearing the name Helaman. That he's his son. Helaman is Warren Jeff's son? Mm hmm Of what, one of his first, I mean, he had so many wives. I believe he's from one of the first two. Okay. So, I don't know which one. Oh, that's, well, that's a question I have. Do you guys have, um, like in the order, there was definitely like a hierarchy of like, you, you could tell they were Paul's kids. They got, they got to be treated better. They got nicer homes. 
blah blah blah. Oh yeah. And then, so there was a hierarchy. Yeah, specifically or, the Jeffs. The Jeffs got to get specifically the Jeffs. Wow. And at some point, some of the All Reds creeped up in there as well. They weaseled their way they up. They weaseled in there. their way up in there. Wow. The so, Barlows never really really made the cut. Really? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Barlows, a lot of the Johnsons. I don't know. They never really made that cut to. Be in the Did you guys positions. have um? So our, in our group, there was a lot of like, oh, your your bloodline comes from Italian bloodline. So then the girl, the girls would sometimes get married, but the boys wouldn't, because the bloodline has to be like, for in maybe you guys didn't have this in the order. We believe that the Kingstons are like the true bloodline that leads all the way back to Christ, because mm -hmm. we're of the twelve tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. So you would rarely ever see a, um, basically a Kingston woman has to marry King, like you have to keep that Kingston bloodline. So that's why when your bloodline is a man isn't Kingston, you're not going to get a Kingston woman. Does that make sense? You have to like marry up as a woman. Really? So I could never marry someone who was not basically my cousin <laughs> because my bloodline is Christ's bloodline. So you guys didn't have anything like that that was like, oh, you you guys are um, of, of like Italian bloodline, so we kind of don't really want that bloodline to be spreading. I don't think so. Really? I mean, there were families that had daughters that married the prophet of the church and then daughters that married the bottom of the but barrel. What about the boys? In the, did the boys have a hard time getting married? I don't think so. Really? So I mean, there was this whole thing with like the lost boys uh -huh. a while back. What does that mean? But... Honestly, I think they were just, they wanted their freedom. Oh, they wanted to rebel and they wanted their, wanted their freedom. Thing. I think a lot of people looked at it as like, they don't have enough women or, you know, mm -hmm. these men aren't worthy of marriage or whatnot. But they weren't. They were teenagers, most of them. Wow. So they would just be like, okay, we're, we're keeping these women for us and you guys just... <laughs> well, I think a lot of them were on their way out anyways. Oh. Unfortunately, some of them were like kicked out of their homes at young ages and just were really struggling. Really? And there was like a home of them, I believe, at the creek somewhere for quite a while. A home of lost boys? And everybody boys. knew them as like the lost boys. So how young would they get kicked out? And why? They're just like they were out drinking, so okay, you're excommunicated? Yeah, I think it was just behavioral stuff the church didn't agree with. Just kids wanted to live their lives, but they weren't in line with what the church wanted, so they got booted. As teenagers? Mm -hmm. Wow. And so that would mean that the family wouldn't be able to talk to them anymore. They wouldn't be able to be affiliated. Yeah, unless What's the really family wanted to reach out, but yeah. And that was probably kind of rare. Yeah, dang. That's crazy. You were talking about too how there was kind of like a, a a home that you went into. Oh yeah, that was like later on after Warren went to prison. There was this whole thing with the um, the United Order is what they called it. Oh yes. So there was like the regular church, right? And then I guess there was like some restoration revelation that came forth, and people needed to be interviewed to see if they were actually qualified to continue to go to church and receive these glorious teachings from Warren Jeffs. <laughs> so everybody got interviewed and if you didn't qualify, and I don't know who was judging, I think Lyle was just pulling judgments out the seat of his pants, but mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know where they were coming from. You, yes, no. You just like what is it called? Roll the dice. <laughs> yeah. Because when it happened, so the first time it happened, then I qualified. A lot of our family did. I had brothers that didn't, and one of our eight-year-old sisters didn't qualify, and I never understood that. I'm like, the kid yeah. is eight. She hasn't even been baptized. That's why. <laughs> so she had to get separated? Yeah. Into it. Her mom would take her, so they would hold separate meetings for people that didn't qualify, and then the main ones at the general meeting house for the people that did. Oh, my god. And they would hold these separate meetings for non-members in the mornings, and her mom would take her. So you, so you went to a non-member home. Well, right? this was later. Later on. So the first time you so passed, you're like the first time around. I was like, whoo, good, made the cut. <laughs> how many times did they? How many? Like every five years? I or? think that it happened three times, but by the time the third one had happened, I don't really recall. I don't know that I was really in the church mentally at that point yeah. anymore. But the. After I qualified, essentially, then all these revelations started coming out about all the food restrictions, all of the weird things like only handle dirty laundry with your left hand and clean laundry with your right hand. And when you get dressed, you put on your leggings and your socks and whatnot on the right side first and then the left. Oh and God. then we can eat all these. Did you ever actually do that? Yes. You did. Girl, <laughs> I was going to qualify. <laughs> 
lie and say, yes, I've been doing that. <laughs> oh my but yeah, god, I was like, go crazy. Yeah, yeah, people did. There's all the food restrictions, and I don't even remember all of them, but like, we couldn't have corn, milk, chocolate, coffee, potatoes were restrictive, onions were restrictive, just, there was so much stuff that we suddenly couldn't eat. No processed foods. Ice cream was gone, cold cereal was gone, candy was gone, and then toys were supposed to go. So toys were gone. Balls, toys, bikes. Did it pets too? Pets went. What they, happened to the pets? I don't know. I think that, I heard that some of them were yeah. put given away and like set Some of free. them were given away, some of them were put a lot of them were put down, I think oh, actually. Unfortunately. Crazy. We had two really nice dogs growing up. Yeah. And I don't know what happened to them. Oh, and that was when Warren went to jail. And so he's like No, so the dog thing happened way before that. Oh really? Yeah. I did not know that. Well the dog thing happened I think around the time he became the leader. But oh, it was okay. before it was he went, because it was of him, prison. Though? I think, but partly was because of him, but I remember there was a family that raised dogs. I don't know if they were raising them to adopt them or if they were training dogs that were out of control. Mm -hmm. But one, one of the dogs, I believe, was a Rottweiler that got out and actually killed one of their little kids. Oh my god! They had like a little two or three year old child that died because one of the dogs attacked it. And then after that, I remember all the dogs disappearing. So I don't know if that's what triggered that mm -hmm. I or if it was something story. else. Yeah. I always thought it was when Warren went to jail and he was just, he just wanted everyone to not have fun because he couldn't. That's no, there were some things that happened. disappeared beforehand. But yeah, the toys thing was ridiculous because, I mean, I remember people getting looks when their babies had a rattle in their hand. And I'm like, it's you a rattle. a rattle? Okay. The only toys for the longest time that I saw in people's homes that we had in our homes was like blocks, building blocks, maybe some Legos here and there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, all the toys disappeared. Rollerblades, basketballs, bikes, gone. Everything. Wow, that's crazy. We definitely could have toys. There were restrictions. Like, we couldn't have the Barbies the way you could take their clothes off. It had to be the Barbies where the clothes were like glued on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't undress your Barbies. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you for the the memberships, Mark. So oh my sweet. gosh, there are so many questions. Sorry, yeah, Should you guys are commenting, and I'm I'm just like so fascinated because <laughs> some of these like we've been hanging out so much, and there's still so much that I'm like, oh my gosh, I never knew this about you guys. Let me look at these questions and see what's on here. You know, I always thought though that the FLDS married their half sisters just like us, and then and then I got weird looks from you guys when I talk about. It. I was like, oh, we are the weird ones. I mean, people <laughs> married relatives to a degree. I personally don't know of anybody that married half siblings. I think they did first cousins for sure. First cousins, but second cousins. Nieces, maybe. I I mean nieces? I don't I don't think so, but I don't I'm not sure. I would be surprised if there wasn't any, honestly. <laughs> Those men over there. Would kids get into trouble for making toys and games? Yeah, what did, um, they, what did they make? Did they ever make them? Did they use them? I mean, the kids were very creative because everything was gone. They had yeah. to be. No TV, no books, unless it's church. So yeah, food. there were like outside yard games. That they that the kids would make and and did they get in trouble for that? I don't mm -hmm. think so. Hmm. All the trampolines disappeared too. There were oh, a lot of people had trampolines that were gone as well. We lived at one house that had a really big play set in the backyard in a sandbox. The previous people that had lived there had installed it when they lived there. And oh. that thing was great. The kids loved it. They were always out there playing. And then something came down about toys and all the stuff from Warren. And a crew came in and completely dismantled that play set and hauled it off. Oh, that's so sad. And it wasn't anything major. It was like a couple of slides, some swings, and like some monkey bars. It wasn't anything crazy. And they demolished it? Yeah, that they took so it. That's so sad. Do you want some more of these? <laughs> um, yeah, maybe the purple one. The purple's the best. How much you want? Just... Don't see them. That's good, thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm like Good sweating because this, this this stuff has a lot of caffeine in it. <laughs> and I had coffee today too. Oh my god, I'm way behind on the questions. Where are they? Here we go. I know, sorry. We're we're trying to catch up on your guys' questions. Oh, thank you, Flicker Faith, for the don't I keep saying donations, but it's the it's the gifted memberships. So if you become a member um, and they're gifting the membership, there's actually a, a little video that's not public. That's a, it may be a podcast eventually, but you can watch it. And I'm trying to find where, where, where did we leave off on these? Oh, Anthony said, I thought the FLDS was over. So no, it actually no, has never no. been over. There's been times throughout their existence that they've gone a little bit more into hiding or a little underground. If they were getting pressure from the government on certain things or people started investigating them and they kind of just would disappear a little bit for a while 
but they've always they're still there in the crib they've they're always been there. around if you go to, to colorado city you'll see them wearing the dresses they yeah. you have made your own dresses too. a lot of them have moved because they've been evicted from their homes from some property disputes and stuff down mm -hmm. there they've moved to cedar city utah and st george area so you'll see a lot of them around there how are they doing church with him in jail? Is it just at home church meetings, like uh, family home? Meetings? I don't know that they are doing church. Oh, really? Unless they purchased another building somewhere, a warehouse or something, because the original church back at the Crick has been, it doesn't belong to them anymore. It's been bought out. By what? Person? I don't know, by a different property company. Was it because they weren't paying their taxes on the homes? That's what I heard. Possibly. I know that a lot of the church was behind on their taxes. I heard that they were building, not finishing the home so that they didn't have to, because it was an unfinished home and you don't have to pay if it's unfinished. Makes sense. Most of the homes down there were beautiful they are on the inside and they looked terrible on the outside. Yeah, so that it looked like it was unfinished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys were good at bleeding the beast too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Of course. Anything for the low weather. Nicola says, toys are some of the oldest human objects we have. They're so important to development. I agree. I taught homeschool. I taught first graders for about eight years. And I sneakily went out and purchased stuff and kept in my classroom no for those way. kids. I had to. My grandma was a first grade teacher. She taught in the public schools. So some of the stuff that she had to get rid of, she just quietly handed over to me. Oh. And I kept it under wraps. But I do agree with that. It's so important for kids. Mm -hmm. You cannot well, just take that stuff away. And work their whole life away. That's what they wanted. Thank you for the no donation, Lisa. Um, Jennifer says, how many FLDS do you think are still actively in? I don't know. If I had to take a guess, I would say roughly five, 6,000 maybe. Really? And they still have that compound in South Dakota, right? I believe so. Yeah, if you guys watched this game with me when we went with Rachel Jeffs out there. It's like in the middle of nowhere. Pring yeah. Pringle, South Dakota. And I've heard, I don't know how true it is, but I've heard they've got something either going up or already established in Minnesota. Oh, really? But I don't know. I, I, heard, I heard about this a couple of years ago, but I never really looked into it, so I'm not sure. Huh. Yeah, we only have, like, I know of, like, we have our branch in Idaho because we had to have that potato farm. <laughs> and then, um... Some are in Pennsylvania now, and I keep hearing that Pennsylvania is really just a spot where they send, like, the bad kids mm -hmm. to get them away from whatever is making them bad. Send them off. Um, what was this question? Darcy says, Amanda, how far back generally are those in FLDS able to trace their ancestry? On my dad's side, we go back to the 1500s in Europe. I don't know. I don't know that anybody really did. I think we just went back as far as we could remember when mm -hmm. our parents joined the church, and then we were like, that's the end. Joseph Smith, Jesus. Yep. <laughs> that's and all there was, was to it. Joseph Smith, and then Jesus Christ. <laughs> direct descendants. That's all there was to it. <laughs> so you guys are direct descendants of Christ. I guess so. You guys <laughs> got a, a competition. <laughs> yeah, well, we definitely believed in that 12 tribes of Israel. But it was so weird because they would be like, it's Native Americans are a part of the 12 tribes, but not like they were super uh, specific on the races that you could uh, mix with and you shouldn't be mixing with the races that weren't. Yeah. And I remember having a discussion actually with one of my family members who was in the order after I had left and I was so heated because I was like, you guys are racist. And they're like, no, we're not. I'm like, you, you're not going to let someone who's African American join if they wanted to. And yeah. Like, they could join. They have to pay a fee. And they just won't be able to get married. I don't know that the FLDS would even accept them, fee or not. Yeah, that would interfere with their pure blood. And mind. I don't. I think they're saying that if if a African American flat out was like, "Hey, I'll pay the fee and I'll join. Let me come to your church," me they wouldn't. They would be like, yeah. or they would make the, the fee like super high, <laughs> so that the person ridiculously would high, and they'd make them pay it monthly. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta get renewed. <laughs> But yeah, like that, that is racism. Is it not to be like, oh, well, we, we don't believe in mixing our, our race because that's a sin. Is that not racism right there? <sighs> them trying to defend that though. It just makes them look so bad. It's like, please stop talking. <laughs> it's crazy though, how our, the pillars of our groups are the same as far as the racism, the polygamy, the consecration, yeah. it's all very similar. And the three wives thing. Apparently that was in your group too. You must have three wives to get into the celestial kingdom. Hi, Jenny. Love catching you live. It's good to see you. Does she know Sam and P Melissa from Growing Up in Bloomington? You know Sam's family. I do know who they are. Yeah. 
But um, that's the Zidding family. Mm -hmm. Were they in the creek? Uh huh. Oh, okay. Everyone kind of knows everybody. I even was trying to tell her, I was like, do you know this person that I that I recently met? She's like looking at him, he's like, I don't know. And then she like looks at the pair, she's like, oh, I know who they are. <laughs> that's how it is for the order too. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of like all the kids. Yeah. But if you go to the parents, you're like, oh yeah, that's my cousin. <laughs> that's crazy though. I was, that number's kind of small. 5,000, you really think only 5,000? There have been so many people that have left, but I'm not sure. I mean, maybe they started having kids again in the last couple of years. I don't know. I heard Helaman is letting some of them have kids. I feel like this is so bright. Did you hear that? That Helaman's like allowing mm -hmm. more marriages and kids? Oh, I know that he's got a bunch of kids. So he's allowed to have them. <laughs> but he's young, too. Mm -hmm. In his 20s. Mid-20s, I think. And he's like the patriarch of a lot of, I don't know, people go to him, I guess, for answers. Um, I just think that people think that his dad talks through him, so. Do, do you think he does? Or do you think he's just saying that? I don't know. It could be either or, honestly. Yeah. Would the men make an exception to marry a pretty black woman? For example, Holly Berry or Thine Noon. No. Mm -hmm. Don't matter how pretty they are. It doesn't matter. It's the color of that skin. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. uh, the, the bloodline, again, right, you, you do not want to taint Jesus' bloodline, so you yeah. can't mix. I mean, mix money up. talks. If they came with an heir of like $10 billion, they would make an exception. Yeah. I feel like oh. they probably would. Yep. But just, you know, them being pretty or them being a nice person or expressing interest in the group, that wouldn't apply. Yeah. And we have had people in the group where there was rumors that their bloodline was a black bloodline. Even the girl, the, it was a girl and a boy, even the girl never, the men didn't want her because of that bloodline. Yeah. And it's so crazy that they think that that's not racist. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, aren't Lamanites okay? Yeah, Lamanites, are, Lamanites aren't those the Native American? That's my family. Yeah, <laughs> that's her. So my family is okay. Native American, so obviously it's okay, I guess. But so we're, are we technically related? Or is it, because Price Johnson. So that's where we're Lamanite too. Mm -hmm. That's what you're referring to, right? Mm -hmm. So Lamanite is the Native American and the Johnson that, oh, I didn't even explain this. So Price Johnson is my great grandpa. So if you guys remember when I did my whole like family bush video and my grandma Isla, who's the sixth wife to Ortel, she came from Price Johnson. And Price Johnson, so everybody gets so confused when I tell my family history. Basically, my great grandpa came from the FLDS. And the stories that we heard was like, oh, he got revelation from the Lord to come to the order and to leave the false church. But then you guys were told, oh, he fell away from the church. <laughs> but that's how now there's Johnson's in yeah. the order, but there's also Johnson's in the FLDS. Yes. So my great grandpa, her great grandpa are brothers, same dad, different moms. Mm -hmm. So the families kind of just split off different directions. Weird. So I, that's how I'm related to actually a lot of FLDS. Because everyone's just marrying each other. Like, just like we were saying, there's no missionary bringing new blood in. Yeah. Yep. It's so interesting to hear more of the history. I was surprised on that embezzling video. He was working with a Turkish guy. I would have thought that wouldn't be white enough. <laughs> oh, but yeah. for money, for money, they will make exceptions. Also, Paul works with people for money. But that doesn't mean he's going to have them join and marry his daughters. No, no, no. No, no, no. But if he can make money off of you, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the big difference. I am in my 40s. This was how I was taught in mainstream Mormonism in Utah. Lamanites not allowed. Seriously. Oh, really? Lamanites were the good ones. The good ones. <laughs> the, the pure blood. But I was taught. It's all a bunch of mumbo jumbo, so it doesn't really matter. We also were taught that Jesus was white with like blue eyes and blonde hair. And I don't know if you guys did this, but in our group, they edited pictures of Jesus to have like short hair and like lighter skin. We never had pictures of Jesus hanging on the wall. Why? Just the leaders of the church. What? Did you guys ever talk about? So I actually didn't really hear much about the atonement till after I left. Like forgiveness. Like blood atonement? Mm -hmm. Did you guys hear about that or learn about it? Um, I mean, it never happened that I'm aware of while I was no, part of the, the church. No, the atonement, like, like Christ uh, died for our sins so that we can be forgiven. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The blood atonement? I was like, I, the reason why I say that is because I have heard 
some rumors recently of people talking about it. In the FLEA? Yeah. But I haven't, like, heard or seen or witnessed or known of anybody um, doing it in there. For That's what I thought you were referring know to. what we're talking about, the blood atonement is, it is in LDS history. And the blood atonement is basically, you can Google this, but Google blood atonement. It's basically this, this rule that if someone is sinning really hard in your church to prevent them from sinning, you can kill them and it's saving them from their sins. And the LeBaron group was very big on the blood atonement. Yeah. I did a whole video on the LeBaron yeah. group for creepy stories from my cult last, maybe two years ago, if you guys are interested and you can watch it. But um, apparently someone was saying in the temple ritual, for years they were still doing this this blood atonement thing when you go into the temple and you you like get in doubt or whatever they did this thing where they went across your neck which someone from the lds church told me back in the day they were they're like well they're like they could be like my grandma they were telling me the story that when they went in they, they did this motion when they got in doubt or whatever and they wanted to figure out why they did that but it was from old old like masonic i don't know re referencing back to the blood atonement meaning if you're falling away from the church you are getting permission that we can we can save you from yourself. Weird, weird stuff that I learned when I was friends with these these very, very old ex-Mormons. <laughs> How Nicola said the blood atonement came from Brigham Young, so it's standard Mormon. I didn't know that. I thought it started with Joseph Smith. I did too. But they were both Freemasons. Yes. And I heard that it came from the Freemasons. The Freemasons. I didn't realize it was Brigham Young um, specifically, though. That's interesting. Brigham Young. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. That's I'm going to Google that. <laughs> Everybody hates Brigham Young. <laughs> Even you LDS people. You know what, though? Like, I'm a direct descendant of him. No. Like, like five generations down. Yeah. What? Yeah. And Which I, wife? honestly, um, the, the the it's, no, it's, on my, it's on my dad's side oh. of the family. It's my dad's, my grandma. Wow. But yeah, so I'm a direct descendant of him and growing up in the church, so proud, you know, Brigham of everybody. Young. And I was so just excited that I was a direct descendant. And then <laughs> I left and I started reading stuff about him and I was like, the man's an asshole. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. He's definitely <laughs> very, I feel like he was more racist than Joseph Smith. Too. Yeah. He was a wife beater too. Really? Like, oh yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised. Yeah. But. That's really sad. I heard too, like, well, we already know this, that they brought, so, so slavery was abolished, but the LDS church, uh, at the time, LDS people hate when I bring this up, they brought slaves with them across and trekked across and they had them in Utah. There are still homes and I, we've, I know people who have seen this still homes to this day in the avenues in Utah where the basement has like a chamber where there's chains and stuff where they kept their slaves. I saw something recently about that. So, there's someone on TikTok actually that looks up these homes on Zillow and then they'll like do these virtual tours on TikTok and show them off. And I saw a couple of them in Utah and that was that. Yeah, they they had those in the basement. I was surprised. I didn't they know tried that. to hide that they did that, but they, that hundred percent, that was happening after slavery was abolished. They were very anti. Yeah. I know I say this story a lot and LDS people hate it, but it is the truth. And, and, um, obviously now, I mean, it's, it's not, if you dig a little bit, even just a little bit, you can find this dark history, but, um, they did allow, uh, black people to have the priesthood, I think in the seventies. I think it was in the seventies. It took That's them that yeah. long. So there was definitely some racism and I, I think it yeah. was Brigham Young's fault. Recently, well, recently within the last like three years, I went to one of the performances of the Tabernacle Choir and they have like all these people in the choir. There was maybe three African Americans in that whole choir I was like wow. wow I really thought there would be more at this point but yeah it's a very um well even growing up in Utah and I did go to public school for two years it's a very whitewashed state of a lot of whitewashed yeah. Mormons but let's see 1978 was when it was changed yeah Nobody's. but thank god it did change and there are changes that are happening where the LDS church is trying to do better I try to like say hey hey Pat them on the back for growing because they could be like our polygamous churches who aren't growing and they're still doing racism and inbreeding and incest. So you got to pat them on the back <laughs> a little bit at least. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, Oz. Any connection to the infamous The Work from Connecticut led by Julius? No, I the, the work is reminds me of Calvin Wayman's group, the Centennial. the Centennial group. I actually have not heard of that, The Work. Do you, have you even heard of that one? Mm-mm. By Julius Shacknow? No, I'm I gonna Google that. Though. We have been on a on a cult binge. What was the show? <laughs> Shiny Happy People. Had it just came out. It? 
we binged the whole thing and it just made us like uh talk about how similar it was to our groups it really is like the whole the thing that really grinded my gears well all of it did but the shocking like they did this analogy of the umbrella so they had christ up here and then they had the husband and then they had the wife and then they had the kids that's like the the chain of command and the order mm -hmm. the follow the one above another the woman yeah. ties into her husband the husband ties into the it's just like a that's pyramid the same scheme as flds as well yeah that, so I think all cults have that, where you have the tie-in to the chain of command. Is LaDonna here? Did I say LaDonna? Yes. Hello, LaDonna. How are you? I haven't seen her in a while. Um, <laughs> I love Debbie's comment. Well, look at me a felony. Incest a felony. Utah full of weird houses. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. Check, check, Yes. Check. Yep. And I feel like it's the crazy part of it is, is I wish so bad that LDS Church would just come out and be like, yep, we did all of this. <laughs> but the, that's what makes me so mad is that there's so many secrets and it's like you have to do the digging to find it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that they're slowly getting there. But I just think that it, if you just hold yourself accountable and you, I mean, I say this all the time on my channel, don't run from yourself. Don't run from being held accountable. Everybody's history like American history is dark. So uh, the LDS t history is obviously gonna be dark back in the time when you guys were starting and like slavery wasn't bad necessarily, right? It was legal. So just acknowledge it, own up to it, be like, yep, we made some mistakes. <laughs> but the fact that they're not doing it yeah. is why I get so frustrated. I mean, they're coming along a, a little by little, but. <sighs> Anyways, I was almost LDS when I first left the order. Did you ever get enticed to join? Mm -mm. Never. No. Well, I I was a little. Interested. I didn't want anything to do with any of it. Any religion or anything. Oh, period. Wow. I just, my brain needed a break from my, my brainwashing. My brain was like, oh, I need to find the true church, like Joseph, the whole Joseph mm -hmm. Smith story. Like this church is wrong. This church is wrong. So I need to f dedicate my time to find the right one. Yeah. And then I would feel guilty on Sundays because I was like wasting the sabbath day i could be doing something with yeah. the sunday i know people from the flbs that did and some of them are still there but i know of a few that left and immediately went to the lds mm -hmm. but i think you know they were trying to find something in common yep. your, your lives are mumbo jumbo they're all messed up you don't know where to turn or what to do and or how to function you know losing that sense of community is like i think the most shocking thing yeah but some of my friends um, that i knew at that time joined and then a little later on, they kind of figured out their lives, what they wanted to do, and realized yeah. it was just far too similar to what they grew up with. Yeah. So. I think that's what it was. Like, at first I found comfort in it because I was like, oh, this is a community of people who know Joseph. I thought the whole world, whoever was Christian, believed in Joseph Smith because I always read my Bible out of the quad, which had the, the, the Book of Mormon and all of that after. And so I just thought that if you believed in God, you believed in Joseph Smith. <laughs> So I was very shocked when not the whole world believed in Joseph Smith. Not, not all Christians believed in Joseph Smith. Did you think that? I, I felt so dumb when I left. I was like, wow. And I still sometimes will quote quote the Bible, and then someone will correct me and be like, that's not in the Bible. <laughs> that's in Dr. <laughs> Covenants. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I always kind of knew growing up that the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith was just an LDS and the break off branches type of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, we knew that there were, you know, the Catholic Church and the Baptist Church and all of that that just used the Bible and I don't know what other... I guess I was just dumb. <laughs> because to me, it didn't make sense that you didn't know about Joseph Smith. And But we were taught that the Mormons were the wrong church because they fell away. Us right? too. The great and abominable church. Mm -hmm. That's what it's they were referred like to as in the FLDS. I feel like they hated them the most, even though they were the most similar. And maybe it's because they wanted to deter their members from joining it. Yeah. I don't know. Thank you for the donation, Oz. If you watch the People Mad Cult doc series, you'd have material for months. Hi, Aquanta. Aww. Oh, hi, Oz. Um, oh, yeah. So someone did see. So Shiny Happy People is Jill. Yeah, the Duggards. So we watched the whole thing, and it was insane. Um, oh, my gosh. Like, I did not think they were going to be uncovering so much. There was so I didn't much. realize how similar Bill Gothard's 
the whole, I don't know what they call that, IDLP or something. Yeah. I didn't realize how similar that was to the FLDS, mm -hmm. the chain of authority, mm -hmm. there's all of it. I was just and the, shocked the by the abuse it. that was going on. Yeah. They show a video of this guy being like, can someone donate their kid to, on the stage and in front of that, look like thousands of yeah. people. And he's like, I'm going to show you how to properly spank your kid. And some girl donates her kid to like, yes, yeah, spank my kid. And the kid's like going... What the hell? Like, I was watching it cringing so hard, but, like, it reminded me of my church. My yeah. church would literally be, like, your five-month-old baby is should be obedient. And if you have to hit that baby, then you can, because the babies are smart enough to be obedient. And they would teach that kind of stuff in our church. So that triggered me. I was like, oh, my gosh, this reminds me of the order. The part of that that triggered me was, like, after he spanked him, then he told him to give him a hug, and mm -hmm. he gave him a hug, and he was like, whatever the the expression he was used, that wasn't a dedicated enough hug or that wasn't a good enough hug and he spanked him again. Mm -hmm. And then my my family did that same thing and I was telling Quantum, I'm like, this is why I have bad relationships because in my brain, uh, love is shown by pain like that. So I was, I was spanked, but I would be given this whole lecture on why I'm doing this because I love you, right? And like, I would get, sometimes like if I uh, didn't cry, then they, they would do it again. Like if you don't cry, then they would keep going with the stick. So it's like, they, they do that because they love you. And it's like, but, but so can I spank you because I love you? <laughs> like, no. What can I give in return? <laughs> exactly. So I think that that still is messing with my yeah. head as an adult because like, I don't feel like I'm truly loved unless it hurts. <laughs> that's, that's, I gotta go to therapy for that one. But that, that was like an aha moment when I saw it. I was like, huh, that probably a lot of people have that because a lot of people out in the world have been spanked too. Like oh, yeah. even the IBLP, right? That's millions of members, right? Yeah, they're all over the place. See, I didn't realize that either. I didn't know that that group was so massive. Yeah, I didn't think so either. I didn't realize that. I was watching, I was like, whoa. <laughs> and I didn't realize the Duggars were so like prominent in there. I always thought the Duggars were just like a break off of a polygamous group because they seemed like it, but I never, I never was interested in watching it. Just like I was never interested in watching Sister Wives. Like I, I lived it. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> Same shit. They won't live in reality because they can't face it. Yeah, and I think a lot of people just really like the idea, I don't know, it, it really grows narcissistic men. Like, watching that, I was like, these are all narcissists. And the crazy yeah. thing is that the core of the religion is, like, have all these babies and, like, parenting and how to parent your kids right. But the leader didn't even have kids or a wife. It's like, okay, so you can just spew out all of this nonsense? Like, how do you even know any of this? It's the fact that so many parents ate up everything he said, knowing that he didn't have any kids or a wife. Why? Like, how do you just take all of the stuff that he says and apply it to you raising your kids when he has no experience? Exactly. It's like, I read somebody's comment earlier that said he had hypothetical kids. <laughs> His hypo yeah, when you have a hypothetical kid? Yeah. Why didn't he ever get married? Did he say he had a calling to be a priest or whatever? I don't remember that. Sure. I don't know. Maybe somebody in the comments remembers. <sighs> I don't know. IBLP is like the order, though. Have 300 good pure white soldiers for Jeebus and beat them for birth from birth. Yeah. It's true. The term the order is used within Freemasonry family, bloodlines, householder, cult of family. Yeah, but it's also in the the Bible. Oh, see, this is where I mix up. Is it in the Bible or is it in the Book of Mormon? Because that's why the order, um, I mean, technically we are called the DCC, the Davis County Cooperative Society. We went by that in the beginning and then now we're the LDCC, the Latter-day Church of Christ. But we coined the name the order because of a uh, con consecration. Yeah. And you guys have United Order. Yeah. Which is like a higher up version of the FLDS. So we're just a bunch of crazy, crazy, crazy. This, like, the more I talk about it, the more I'm like, do you ever have this moment where you're like, I came from that? <laughs> I was raised like that? Sometimes. I'm like, out of all the families in the whole world, I got born into that? I know. I was telling her, I was like, I always thought that, like, I did something bad in heaven before I was born, and that's why God put <laughs> me in the punished you. He's like, you're going to learn. <laughs> Made me a woman in the order, too. Ugh, it's so much easier. That's why I feel like a lot more women leave at the order, specifically, is because it's so much easier to be a guy in the order. Because you could just be a narcissist. Yeah. Um, do you want me to put your cup down, or do you want another drink? I was laughing at um, Epic Ninja's comment. What? It said, my hypothetical kid is the best. I don't know why people don't parent the way I do. <laughs> See? Me, too. Seriously. <laughs> He's an angel. <laughs> uh.
Uh, I love your hair crimp. Thank you. I don't know how to do it any other way at this point of growth. I kind of want to cut it again. <laughs> I'm, I'm just not happy with it. But thank you. Where are we at? What are we talking about? We're talking about IBLP. They didn't even raise their kids, but the kids raised the kids. Oh, yeah. That's the sad thing about yeah. having having so many kids. The older kids end up raising the rest of them. I'm the second oldest of 10, and I 100% like at 15 years old, I was driving the kids to and from school illegally because I didn't have my license, but that, my, that was what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, I think the Duggars had something called the buddy system where they paired up the older kids with the younger kids. They were their buddy, and they so, were responsible for them for different things. I don't know what the extent of it was. That's how you but, you don't have a childhood. That's yeah. how you that's how you steal a childhood from your child by making them a parent uh, as they are a child. Yeah. And then you and then they probably feel the sense of guilt if they're not taking care of that child properly enough. Mm -hmm. I definitely felt like I had to make sure that these kids were fed and you know keep them alive. <laughs> yeah. You know what chilled me to the bone was that little clip of the little girl that she couldn't have been more than two or three years old. Saying like instant obedience, and I was that like, was "Oh crazy. my god!" You must obey instantly. Yeah, these kids, they yeah, it's like ingrained in them from such a young age. Thank you for the memberships, Mark. Everybody's gonna be a member by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> All my parenting did for my middle child was get his mouth ready for the navy. He's now an unofficial. Oh, so a, a trucker mouth, ha <laughs> ha. You taught him how to cuss a little, or a lot, a lot. I feel so bad for Jen because she's in her 30s and not married yet. Jen who? The sister? Who was the one? The one who's married to Josh. The Josh that went to jail. If you guys yeah. know Josh Duggar is the oldest Duggar. She, he went to jail for child... For, can I say that word on here? Without getting them on this? Child... Went to jail for child P. Yeah. yeah. And um, this woman, it's like she was dedicating her whole life to this group and then she basically gets given to Josh and like just follows in the chain of command under under her husband and he's out there doing all this crap, goes to prison for it. She has kids with him and she is still standing by his side, right? The last time I heard about it, then yeah. Which is like, part of you wants to be like, what? How? Snap out of it. Like, don't be supporting someone like that. But then the other part is like, this is all she knows. She doesn't know anything else which is so sad and then like having her kids have to go to visit him in jail like i don't know i think they stopped the visitation for the kids actually because of like you shouldn't be able to have your kids visiting you if you're going to prison for something like that <sighs> parentification yep making your kids basically be parents when they're children i feel like i chase my childhood as an adult now because of that like i chase the the little fun things of being mm -hmm. a kid <laughs> That's how I was. I was telling you the first time I went to Disneyland, like, I was like 27 years old and I was like a three-year-old with cotton candy in that place. Aww. See, and I, I see that in my, I feel like I see it most in my older sister because Cammy never, like she was, I have a video of her changing my diaper. <laughs> wow. And she's only two years older than me. So she was like, they were really uh, training her to be a parent at a very young age. So like, it's hard to find your inner child when you have to be an adult your whole life. You don't even know what it's like. The buddy system was super messed up when the older girls married, their younger buddies basically bawled because their moms were leaving them. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, we definitely had um, bonds with our siblings like that. Like Rachel was really, really close to one of our younger sisters. She, she shared a room with her, she took care of her to the point where she would hold her and like she wouldn't even go to my dad. Like she didn't, she would like hug Rachel and my dad would get mad that the, his own kid didn't want to go to him and would rather stay with Rachel. But it's because she took care of her, there's yeah. that bond. You're not gonna have a bond that. if you're not there. It's a hypothetical bond. We should do a girls trip to Disney. Oh, that would be so that fun. That would be so fun. A culty crew meet up and we all just go on the, the rides together. I don't want to do that. I am so afraid of heights. There's one ride in Disneyland that I will never go on. <laughs> I have no kids. Me neither. Neither do us. The no kid train. One of the other families, the oldest girl, got married and the mom was posting the little kids crying heartbroken they were losing their real mom yeah that's really sad i just think that um why do you need to have that many kids yeah why 
You can't physically, have you ever tried to take care of more than like five kids at once, all alone? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not about their emotional health or their mental health, it's about keeping them alive. You don't care, <laughs> like those things go out the window when it's that many of them. Cause like when I was into daycare, I don't know why, I hope this isn't legal anymore, but they would say legally you could have eight toddlers to one to person. one adult? Yeah. Wow. And so there were times where, when, when I had eight, it was just about survival. Making sure they all ate, making sure their diapers were clean. I didn't even care about like bonding with them and making sure, you know, get off that kid, go, nap time, peace and quiet. not legal, can you imagine? I mean, I did, I did. <laughs> I can't imagine. But I, I noticed... This is what I learned I didn't want that many kids because in the order I was like, I want 10 kids, 10 kids just like my mom, five boys, five girls. And then I left her, I was like six kids. But then when I was doing daycare, um, eight kids, you cannot have healthy kids. Like their, their emotional needs aren't gonna be met. No. Like mm -mm. when there was three kids and under, I felt like I could actually um, read books to them, talk to them, yeah. teach them things, play games with them. Anything more, it felt like, nope, just make sure they're alive. <laughs> And yeah. then send them off to their parents. But, yeah. That's why, like, now, I'm like, when people ask, how many kids you want? I don't... Uh, I couldn't take them myself. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> I if don't I know. had one, I'd start with that one and see how hard it is to make sure that I don't mess it up. Yeah. But, yeah, you wanted a lot of kids when you were younger, right? Yeah, I think everybody does in those groups. That's just kind of how you're brought up. So. What about after you left? Did you still have an idea? After I left, I didn't have a number like I had when I was there, but I always mm. thought it'd be nice to, you know, have a kid. Yeah. A kid. I might be able to handle one. A kid. <laughs> Just one. Maybe half. <laughs> Just kidding. Half sees. <laughs> All right. Wow, well, we have 206 people here. This has been a long live. Wow. It's been a full hour. Maybe we'll answer a few more questions and then we'll close for prayer. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Let's do the live chat. You can't have more than four kids to one adult now. Oh, good. good. You shouldn't have more than that, really. We used to have a schedule um, during a period of time at my stepdad's house because all of the kids, they made it very just well-known in the church that, like, you do not leave any of your kids unattended ever at any time for any reason. Mm -hmm. So there was a schedule that was made up that was rotated, and the kids were split into groups. And every day in the morning and then after school, you one of the adults was assigned to one of those groups. So like sometimes I'd get up in the morning, I would get like three or four of the, of the kids up, three or four mm -hmm. of the girls up, get them up and dress, get their hair combed, get them to class on time, get breakfast, then we'd all go to school. Mm -hmm. And then we'd come home from school, I'd have like a different group. And I would have ages, what, from five to eight, maybe for the boys, and I'd have like six of them. Wow. And it was my responsibility to keep them busy from after school until dinner time. Was that what every day was like for you? Yeah, Basically. every day was very scheduled out. Wow, that is crazy. Yeah, our, we didn't have separate groups. It was just like I had to get the kids to school on time, and I could barely do that sometimes. We had separate groups because there were so many of them. At one point, the preschool age class had like between 11 to 13 kids in it in preschool. Mm -hmm. And then we had six or seven kids all in the first grade. There was at least that many in third grade. And there were just like groups. Of wow. a whole bunch of kids the same And you age. taught, um, what grade was yours? First. First grade? Yeah. Wow. Did they tell you what you could and couldn't teach? Like the... Well, the church had a curriculum. Oh, wow. Well, like the IDLP yeah. kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they took... Well, because when I was young, we all still went to public school. And then later on, then we transitioned over to home schools. Yeah. But when we transitioned... The FLDS surprisingly has quite a few teachers who have de have teaching degrees. Wow. That so got their degrees. Like no, they got their degrees yeah. in like the 70s and 80s, maybe even the 60s wow. and before. So they have quite a few teachers that actually have teaching degrees, and they helped write a new curriculum, but they all incorporated stuff from the public school curriculum into their own, so that the kids were still okay. getting like but all I'm the sure, basic education. Yeah. So math and things like that. Yeah. But I'm sure like. Obviously, no evolution in science and things like that. Not really a lot. And then, like, all of the, when it came to, like, phonics and English and stuff, when there were, do you remember DOLs? Where you had to go through and, like, put three lines under the lowercase letters that need to be capitalized and punctuate them and all of that. Oh, okay. So they would take those and they would, like, rewrite them to, like, some priesthood story, I guess. So it jived with the church. Huh. Oh, interesting. So it was a churchy school lesson. Yeah. 
I, uh, we, they always brag about our schooling being like better than even the public schooling system, but I disagree because the worst spellers I've ever met in my life are uh, order members. <laughs> me, me included. You guys know Eskel too, my little brother. He spells, I always get him for this one. He spells glad, like I'm so glad that you're here. Glade, G-L-A-D-E. I'll be like, Eskel, where's the E coming from? <laughs> it's a silent E. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, Mary. Any artists in the FLDS in order? Um, mm. I mean, there are people that are artists now, but some of that wasn't really allowed to be expressed in the church. Yeah. So people didn't really do it in there. But and music, the same as... Music was big. Yes, music was big there. Mm. A lot of people played piano, violin. Not mm -hmm. a lot of people played guitar. I don't know if we it was a big really, yeah. instrument. We weren't really <laughs> supposed sure. to be playing guitar. So. Someone mentioned something about um, do the church, how do the churches handle like queers or something like that, the LGBTQIA community. When I was in the FLDS, I think that there were people, obviously, mm -hmm. that were a part of that community that were by whatever. Were they open but I don't know that I don't know of anybody that was open about it in the church. But there are quite a few that are open about it now that they've left. Well, but I just don't think that anybody ever felt safe. I don't yeah. think they felt safe or, you know, oh, that's just accepted good. enough to even come this out is in the a church. Good subject, isn't it Pride Month? So, it is. It is Pride good, Month. Good subject yeah. to bring up, actually. So thank you for bringing up that question. In our group, I, I want to know if this was something in your group. There is multiple men that are married, that are gay then they're making them go to like conversion therapy or really? they're just closeted and so there's one actually that i know of that just left altogether because of, he had kids too is there anything like that going on where they just not that, really not that i know of away? <laughs> yeah not that i know of but i think that if there was it probably would be kept very hush hush yeah so i'm not saying it, it has not happened but if it has i have no idea well yeah, it's definitely, I mean, obviously there's going to be people who are gay in these communities. Oh, yeah. And, but, like, that doesn't mean that it's, it's something that they're allowed to be. And I, I, I mean, I personally went through this with, in my own family where my dad would say to the person, oh, you're just making it up for attention. Uh, like, like, it's like some kind of a disease. They, Ger Gerald, for example, he, he was gay in the order. <laughs> he was gay in the order. He's still gay. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, Flicker. He says, don't forget 77. Okay, so we did talk about 77. All the information about it is in the beginning of this video. I didn't have a lot of information on it. 77 never lived polygamy. And if you know Doris Hansen, 77 married Doris Hansen's sister. But yeah, if you want to hear more about 77, it's in the very beginning of this video. I just didn't want to, like, talk about it. Um, like, I wanted to get it out of the way so that we could talk about your stuff. <laughs> so she's not just sitting here twiddling her thumbs while I talk about 77. What did Gerald say, Gerald? Val's here. Are you doing anything for Pride Month, Gerald? What do you usually do? We went to a, a drag bar and that was really fun. It was really fun. That was. There, this guy, he looked so much like Jeffree Star. I was like, oh my gosh. It, that was the coolest makeup I think I've ever seen. Really? If, if that was just a picture somewhere, say in a movie theater, it looked just like an alien. It yeah, was so it was cool. cool. They're so good at their makeup. It probably takes forever to take it off, though. It's like full on. Probably takes forever to put it on and take it off. Eskel says, yeah, really, my spelling is correct and the English teaching got it wrong. Exactly. Like, who gets to decide how we spell? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Eskel, I love you, but you're spelling my guy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. How do men leave if their business opportunities come from the group? I think a lot of people stay because, one, your money's tied up in it. Yeah. Uh, two, you, yes, you have work experience, but it's all in the group. How are you supposed to write a resume with only cult experience if they're going to, you know what I mean? And Rachel told the story about how she did, I mean, usually if you leave, you don't want to reference the group because they're not no. going to talk good about you. Yeah. Rachel referenced her last job and they, the new job called them and then the person just slandered Rachel because oh, no. she had left the order. Really messed up. But yeah, I think a lot of people stay for, I mean, one, family is the number one reason I think people stay because yeah. they want to be able to be a part of their family so bad. And if you leave, then 99% of the time you won't be a member of your family anymore. 
And then two, financial, I think is a huge thing. There, yeah. All of your money is in the bank there. Your job is there. Your whole life is there. So, yeah. What if I'll say, oh, me and my husband. <laughs> Let me just see what he said. <laughs> in celebration of pride. <laughs> He's like, JK, I'm working. You celebrate that every day, though, Val. You do that every day. <laughs> I love the makeup on drags. Oh, yes. Me Amazing. Too. So much talent, man. Uh, English is stupid. Yep, I agree. Someone break in? No, I think somebody's home. So it might be time to close out this live this was a really fun live thank you guys for asking all these questions you you guys always add so much to these lives it was honestly there are so many questions in here that were so great that i missed i might go in and reply to some of them can you do that after a live uh, i don't know do you want to pick any out really quick that you can find that's the hard part it know. goes so fast there's so many and so many of them were so good i know debbie knows who doris is yeah we love doris I am surprised they don't just kick the fabulous ones out. Um, they didn't. We just left. <laughs> mm -hmm. We just left. No. <laughs> so, so as far as like the well, a few of the ones who were, came out as gay and it started to be more public, they did start to get like ostracized from the group for sure. Um, but I almost feel like if they would have some of them, if they would have like pretended they prayed the gay away, they would have. If they were high enough in the church, they would have gotten married. And then just had to pretend that they were straight. Mm -hmm. I think that did happen, actually. I think that, I'm thinking, actually, I think that happened with one of Paul's kids. There's uh, one person specifically that I know is is gay, and after they came out after they left the church, a while after they left the church, actually, they got married. And I think they mm -hmm. had a kid or two. But I almost cry just thinking about it because this person is so happy, yeah. so happy, and I think back on it, and I'm like, man. They lived like almost 30 years not being able to be their authentic self. Yeah. And it just like kind of, it just makes me sad. You yeah. know, I'm like, they are so happy now. Yep. And they had to deny themselves knowing who they truly are because of that. And this, the, this, I was literally telling her this, I was like, do you feel like you get along with the gay community so much because, and I feel this, like every time I, I have a few friends that I just feel like I click so well with them because they especially the ones from Utah, they had to go through that. Regardless of being in a cult, they had to go through um, coming out. And yeah. a lot of them in Utah were not accepted yeah. after coming out. So for, it's weird, this weird connection that I have with yeah. them. Because, yes, I didn't come, come out in that kind of a way, but I did come out of this cult and have to fight to be able to be my own yeah. self. So I feel this connection with that community. Yeah. So I love, yeah. I love gay bars. It's like, it's such yeah. a different vibe going to those places. They're just such a different sense of community there. Yeah. But, and I think the fact too, that we kind of grow up in similar ways of like, just fighting to be accepted mm -hmm. and, and not ever being accepted. And so you kind of, I don't know. You gravitate you towards gravitate people towards that understand that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Someone said they want to hear your whole story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have horrible memory, so I know I'm like, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see if we could do a video where we talk about just whatever you would want to talk about. Because I never want people to like share their story and have it like hurt them. Like I want people to be empowered by sharing their story. Yeah. So that's actually why a lot of you guys have been like, have this person on your channel, have this person. Well, if they want to, then they can. But it's, it's hard to like dive into the deep like parts of your story. Actually, I'm a little nervous for... Cults, cults to consciousness. Have you seen? I, I asked you this already. Yes. <laughs> yes. Same I'm gonna you. be going on their channel, and I'm nervous about it because I'm now gonna be the one interviewed, and I haven't been interviewed like that in a little while. So I'm like, I know that feeling of like, Ugh. yeah. I think the thing that's hard for me is when I am talking about my story, my background. I always have to use people's names so that people know who I'm talking about. And so it's hard for me to like relay the same type of information and tell a story without saying all the names so that you make the connection, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to like bleep them out. I don't know. Um, oh, I just saw a comment. Tomorrow, yes, on my Patreon, the Culty Crew, we are doing, and, and the Quantum might be there tomorrow for by Jeffrey Dahmer, right? Possibly. On on my Patreon, I do this weekly thing where we dive into the minds of serial killers, and tomorrow is Jeffrey Dahmer, so can't wait to watch. Yeah, see you tomorrow, and hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll get a Quantum in there. <laughs> but, all right, this has been a really good live. 
And thank you guys so much for joining and being so supportive. Follow Aquanta. Do you have a private Instagram? No. Follow Aquanta on Instagram. Maybe I'll link it down below, yeah? Okay. <laughs> then you'll get a lot of new friends on there. Perfect. All right. Love you guys. And I'll see the Patreon family tomorrow on Monday. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.